Jeremiah contradict his character. He cannot honor disobedience and sin. He cannot. De- Deuteronomy 28 makes that very clear. The blessings and cursings. There's a blessing for obedience and there's a curse for disobedience. Verse 25. I'm sorry, 26. He says, For among my people are found what kind of men? They lay wait as he that set snares. They set a trap. They kept them in as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. It says, Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. Ted Wilson, at the 2015 GC session, stood in the pulpit and said, we want to distribute the great controversy and ask for people to give to that cause and then turned around and gave people the great hope where everything about the sanctuary, about anything about the first, second, and third angel's message was removed. That is deceit. That is fraud. And he owes God's people an apology and ought to give the money back Because when you commission people or you appeal to people for a certain cause and then you choose to change, you have to give them their money back. And God says that wicked men are amongst my people. See, Jesus said you know them by the fruits. Just because somebody is quoting to you Sister White's writings doesn't mean they're converted. There have been cases where individuals have stood in pulpit. They started out with the desire of ages, and by the end of the message, they were giving you contemplative prayer, giving you spiritualism, leading you to close your eyes and imagine you're somewhere and think certain things during the prayer. Contemplative prayer. This is spiritualism. This is Jesuit activity. So somebody tell you during prayer to close your eyes and imagine something, you need to to get out of that place, even if it's the church. Did Jesus say close your eyes and imagine? When you're praying, or did he say, our Father which art in heaven? We can't subject ourselves to foolishness, brothers and sisters. So the Bible clearly told us here that there are wicked men amongst us that are setting traps, that are setting traps, right? And it also says that that it has become a cage, is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. They overpass the deeds of the wicked, the Bible says. So that's why we're baptizing LGBT individuals. He us that we even in the way that we dress, even in the way that we act and live and eat, that we are demonstrating Christ's character. Verse 29. God says, Shall I not visit for these things? Say the Lord, Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? It says, O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to do what? Flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet in Tekoa. So did it say that we must may show forth Christ's character, creation on earth? That we would receive his grace, his power, and truly be sealed in the truth of the first, second, and third angel's message. God wants to seal you, but he can't seal you in an environment of sin. Because the, the word church means a, the called out ones. Those who have separated themselves from sin. That's what the church means. If you look up the word church in the Greek, it says the called out ones. What is God calling us out from? From sin. From sin. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Notice what the Bible says in Isaiah 10, beginning in verse 20. In verse 20. Notice what it says, Isaiah 10 and verse 20. 
I want you to see clearly from God's word, representing you and I, those who would be waiting right before the second coming of Jesus, a seed where there's rocks. You don't plant a seed where it will not thrive and bear fruit. Do you? We don't plant a seed in a corrupt environment. You must plant a seed in a pure environment. And God is planting his seed of the first, second, and third angel's message in our hearts. And he desires for you and I to bear fruit. And notice what he says in Isaiah 10 and verse 20. Isaiah 10 and verse 20, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, that who? The, are you the remnant? It says that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more stay or shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but that they shall stay upon, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. So God says that the remnant of Israel shall escape from the house of Jacob. Why are they escaping? Because of sin and apostasy. That's why they're escaping. God is not going to allow them to remain in an environment corrupt with sin. Isaiah 37, notice what it says. Isaiah 37 says the same thing, brothers and sisters. Isaiah 37, beginning in verse 31. Isaiah 37, beginning in verse 31. Notice what the Bible says. Isaiah 37, beginning in verse 31. The Bible says... And the remnant that is escaped of the house of where? Of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem, out of where? Out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of the thorns. In verse 1. Notice what it says. And the Bible says in Revelation 18 and verse 1, it says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now let's pause for a moment. Do you know that this is the same description given to God's church that we read about in Jeremiah 5? When it was talking about God's people? That's the same description. That it became a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. God, see, God is in the business of separating his children from sin. This is why Jesus died. Notice what else it says, continuing in verse 4. I'm sorry, verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. You see, anybody that is not sealed will receive of the plagues. Regardless of your profession, regardless of how long your name was on the church books, no, regardless of how many positions you held in the church, you will still receive of the plagues if you are not sealed. Now the question is, are you allowing Jesus to perfect your character that you might be sealed? Or are you allowing him to shape and mold you in the way that you live your life? Or are you persistent and rebellious in doing what you want to do? Have you valued the cross to understand that you must leave these things alone so that the fullness of Jesus might dwell in you and that he might live out his life through you? You can't accomplish victory over sin in your own power. But if you surrender to Jesus, you will have all the power. And so this is where, this is where the, the power for the Christian lies is in surrendering to Jesus. This is why the song says, I surrender all. I surrender all. 